Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor. And on this week's show, we're going to be previewing the final day of the Ebor Festival at York. Now joining me in the studio is Declan Ricks. Deck, how's your week been? Yeah, it's been a good week. Really enjoyed York. It's been proper top class racing on proper summer ground and City Dry was uh, was magic and maybe Ryan Moore's been even more magical. He's that is a man riding possessed at the moment. He's just Irresistible. Not yeah. as irresistible as Sam Boswell, <laughs> or so, should I call him uh, Pop World Sam Boswell? <laughs> so, Deck has teed it up beautifully there. We are welcoming in Sam Boswell, who is up at York, working hard. But yeah, Sam, it's been uh, it's been popping off up there. It's been a really good week, as Declan said. The action has been fantastic on the track. York's a brilliant city as well. Highly recommend this meeting if anyone's ever looking for a big festival to, to come to for a few days. And uh, fingers crossed we can find a few winners. Thankfully, Brian Moore is riding for us bookmakers on Saturday because he's been cleaning up this week, costing us fortunes. Yeah, and so much more to look forward to again. I, I love that. He's just, just, he's just swerved the pop world question straight away. He's completely I love it. ignored us. What a pro. Yeah, I love an it. absolute pro, unlike us <laughs> two, trying to <laughs> poke and prod away at him. But ever the professional is Sam Boswell and electing to zoom in then to join us looking ahead to the action. Now, before we get stuck into the action, a reminder as ever to please do gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction. Right, on with the preview as we begin with the one 50 at York for Group 3, Strenzel Stakes for the three year olds and over. Over nine furlongs. Ali and Arby, two to one favourite, heading the market. Deck, who'd you like? Yeah, it's a, it's a really competitive race. Um, I don't know about you and Sam, but I didn't see a whole lot of pace in here unless El Flight Plan reverts to front running tactics and makes, makes it um, a bit of a test. But, um, you know, that would be a little bit of a worry for a couple of horses here who are dropping in trip. Um, I, would agree, I would strongly disagree with that graphic I think See the Fire should be favoured in this race uh, she was wonderful in the Nassau I thought she was really unlucky not to win just the race panned out a little bit poorly for her she got too far behind but under the circumstances she ran well but look like her uh, and you know Phantom Flight and you've got others in your Enchifar as well they're all dropping in trip in a race that doesn't have a lot of pace in and I think a lot of these horses apart from maybe See the Fire with the Sex Lounge have similar ability and I just thought Royal Dubai at 20 to 1 was a very big price. Uh, he made good progress out in Dubai um, earlier in the season and in the two runs in Britain this year he's been in good form. He was unlucky in the Diamond. He got a little bit too far out of his ground uh, and ran on to be second and this day he ran well in the Summer Mile. Now this is a Group 2 race and he's dropping down in class to a Group 3. This is him in the blue cap on the far side of the race but he just looks like a horse who will be um, suited to the long straight at York and I just had all the horses in the race. He was the most overpriced for me with Tom Markin taking the ride and four-year-olds winning four of the last ten renewals. Oh, look at you on the trends again there, <laughs> teeing up the ages for this, because it is for the three-year-olds and over, but then interesting, of course, with those four-year-old angles to it and a really good run that we've just been seeing mm. in the BT as well. Good case made to kickstart our preview then from Dexam. Who do you like? Yeah, Dex talks a lot of sense, especially in that first part. Completely agree. See, the fire should be clear market leader. I think it should go off clear market leader, and I think rightfully so. Um, she comes down into this kind of contest and it's going to be a lot easier than recent assignments where you're running OK without winning. You go back to that Goodwood effort. I think that was a, a very fine effort. The, the good to firm ground is going to be no issue for her at all. Um, I suppose the pace angle is interesting. I did note that on her first start where she won, which is actually the last time she won, you've got to go back a little bit. Um, that actually came with her being fairly prominent. So maybe they could change tactics at, at, and try and take advantage of the fact that not too much wants to go on here. But I think she's an absolutely cracking horse and I think she'll go a bit shorter. Um, for my money, I just think this kind of contest is perfect for her. I must say as well, credit to York. We've got a really deep field here, which does open up the opportunity for each way betting. Recent renewals of this have sort of been six, five kind of runners, but it's fantastic to see a deep field here and uh, it gives you plenty of options to look at. But for me, a bit a bit boring front of the betting. I think she'll go off clear favourite sort of agreement there I guess between Deck and you and the fact that she should be at the head of the market so I guess in your sense there's so I'm not siding with the favourite because she is only second in then to Ali and Arvi. now disagreement in our first race between <laughs> the three of us because I'm taking the pair of you two on I'm actually fuming about the price of a phantom flight there I thought he was much bigger price he has been clipped in though so clearly enough people thinking the same as me now Deck, you say about the pace angle in here I am really really hoping the phantom flight 
and Callum Shepard are going to take advantage of that. We're looking back at him here when he won at Newbury. Now, back in second was Tyrold Al Arzi, who, of course, has done plenty for the form, winning his next two in Group 3 company. And I thought Phantom Flight just posted a really likable effort here to reverse the form from the season prior in this race with Al Arzi. In a first-time hood, on stable debut as well, really well positioned. Of course, now we're just for two starts for George Scott previously with James Horton and that was in listed company and to be fair I thought he backed it up to a large extent on his next start at Goodwood third behind Alazi and Relentless Voyager who we'll be seeing in the Ebor of course over a mile four at Goodwood but he is a winner of his sole start at York and with the drop back in trip hopefully they'll go forwards on him and try and take mm. full advantage then of that extra bit of stamina. I, I, I'd be amazed if you didn't get bigger about your lad on, on the day mm. six seems a little bit a little bit short Maybe the Bet Victor traders have been bugging your phone and they know what you're putting up and what you're betting. But if, if that was the case, he would be drifting like a barge. <laughs> <laughs> if that was the case, it's a phantom flight for me. Actually, yeah. Before we finish up, we should just mention we're obviously filming this on a Friday morning. York have had a, the bones of seven mils of rain overnight. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I always think York on rain, soft and ground is really sticky and horrible, tacky ground. And they've got a lot of wind there as well at the moment on Friday. So uh, just might be worth listening to what Jockey say about the ground on Friday. Friday and just assess. And if that's going to switch for bias as well, because we tend to see them then coming towards the sand side rail as well. Yeah. So, Sam, you're going to be our man on the ground for that then. But you like to see the fire in Vestrensel and Deck. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Royal Dubai, please. Nice price then, and I am going to go with a Phantom Flight. Now we move on to the 225 at York. This is the Melrose Handicap, a heritage handicap for the three-year-olds over a mile six. So the three-year-old version of the Ebor later on in the card, but as competitive as ever. Five to one the field here, Sam. Yeah, this is tough, and I think that extra place for paying on the race is going to be needed. And when you look at it, I understand why people would be pretty keen on dramatic star. I think you can obviously put a line through the run uh, the last day. And certainly, you know, if, it, if that horse was arriving here without that run, it'd probably be even shorter than the, what, 13 to 2 that's available at the moment. But for me, I, I wanted to play something each way in the race and was trying to have a flick through. And um, Tom Clover, you look at his recent strike rate, he wouldn't be winning too many races, but his horses seem to be running very well hitting the crossbar. And Table Talk, for me, is a fascinating runner here. Um I felt the run at Ascot went third. Um, that was handicap debut. Kind of was an okay benchmark. And just watching that race back a few times, had to kind of do really a lot of the donkey work. Was was fairly up with the pace. Um, sort of only had one horse in front, pressed on, was on the outer. And I, I just felt perhaps wasn't um, the easiest of runs to, to come with a win. Still ended up a fair third. Um, I've got nudged up a pound for it off a mark of 95 here. It was interesting. Obviously, was added into the derby field and finished down the field there when 10th, but uh, it's still massively unexposed. And I just felt at, what, we 18 to 1, 20 to 1, something like that. Uh, it was a really fair price about a horse that clearly has a lot of potential and could go well here. It's interesting looking at the profile of, of previous winners of this. Sometimes you want something incredibly unexposed. Sometimes you want something battle-hardened. So I'm not too concerned that... This is only going to be the second start in Handicap Company, competitive race. And I felt that price was just a little bit too big. But I do respect the favourite as well, Dramatic Star. But only five. This will only be the fifth race then for your selection and a big price to go with Table Talk as well. So you two are proper swinging for the fences, Deck. We are, yeah. We, we're gluttons for punishment on this show, aren't we? Yes, we an, another big true. field handicap. Unexposed three-year-olds, well-bred. Um, it, it's a tough race. I liked, re, I liked a good few in here. I, I really did like uh, Wild Waves of Andrew Ballings, who's by one of my favourite horses at Crystal Ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I stumped for a horse at a slightly bigger price, trained by Kevin Philippard de Foix, and that is to too bossy for us, um, a, a late mature and son of Golden Horn. Now he's had a good season. Every time he's gone to the racetrack this season, he's gone better. And that's coincided with him stepping up in trip as well. Now this day, when he won uh, at Ascot, this was over 10 furlongs, you know, and I thought it was a, a fair indicator of his ability and natural class that he was able to win over this trip because he's by Golden Horn who, and he's out of a high chaparral mare. Everything about his pedigree suggests he uh, he's a good stayer. And um, his 
his most recent run came in at, at that Haydock meeting. Do you remember um, Haydock abandoned the meeting after two or three yes. races? There yeah. was lots of horses slipping on, up on the bends and I think a lot of horses in this race were actually you know, were running in that race. But uh, Too Bossy for us also ran there and I thought he ran a cracker because uh, Align the Stars on the front end got a, a, a real freebie in a tactical race. But Too Bossy for us was sat in mid-division and you know he had an awful lot of ground to make up and I think just to be beaten under a length and a half was a big, big effort. Now Align the Stars has went to Goodwood in his next start and he won again and he's considered so good he's running in the Yorkshire the Group 2 Yorkshire Cup today mm. so you know if he goes and runs a big race I could see the price collapsing I just thought there was a lot to like about this guy he was a decent price and um, he can go well for a trainer I like Kevin Philip Artefoy is one of the uh, he, look he's not a, a really new trainer now but I think it's interesting the likes of Shadwell are sending him horses he's a good trainer and I'm hoping he'll win this race here He's a really good trainer, mm. isn't he? So many people say that and respect him. Like say, he seems like such a young, new trainer still, but he has obviously been operating at a high level for a number of yeah. years now. But uh, too bossy for us. Now you talk about that Haydock form line. Well, I'm going for retribution for the slippers in that <laughs> race because we had two of them in the well, three horses that reopposed from that race. Too bossy for us being one of those. He didn't slip. He ended up finishing second then. Wild Waves and of course then the favourite as well and Dramatic Star who both slipped up massively inconvenience yeah. via that now the one that i came down on the side of was the horse you were just talking about haven't tipped up though wild waves the the son of crystal ocean in here who again we still do a lot of learning about then aren't we in terms of him as a sire but hopefully though wild waves is none the worse and for that slip up because we're going to look back at him uh with his last win on that penultimate start came at doncaster his second handicap start back on turf as well. This was when he was two from two in handicaps, two from two since the fitting of a hood. And he just looked hugely progressive with this success. So I am more than willing to draw a line through last time out. Just hope that he's totally forgotten it. We never quite know with horses. Yeah. Hopefully he has because he's able to run off of the same mark as last time out with more to come. Stamina clearly proven at this distance by the way he's hit the line here. And with the St. Ledger entry to boot as well. Now that is only in three weeks time, but he's trained by the right man, Andrew Balding, who won this in 2020 and 2021. And the winner of this race last year was Middle Earth, who did mm. run in the Ledger in his next start. Yes, exactly. Like you say, he was able to do the double and was a, is a really classy individual. And I'm hoping that Wild Waves is just as classy. So then, that is our preview of the Melrose. Now, onto the three o'clock at York. This is the Group 2 City of York Stakes. Three year olds and over, over seven furlongs. Still, still looking for that Group 1 status, but we are waiting for the average of 115. Again, there for the first three home. Hopefully, we'll get that then and it will get its Group 1 status in June due course but deck for now though who takes advantage of the seven furlong contest yeah i'm hoping it's going to be your audience i, I think he'll take a, a fair bit of beating here if he if he's on a going day and i thought 13 to 8 was uh was a more than fair price now he was second in this race last year to, to kinross but their careers have gone in two completely different directions i think kinross the old boy it breaks my heart to say but i think he's slightly on the on he's slightly aggressive at the moment on the other hand audience has taken a massive step forward this year um, look, I, I think he's improved about maybe 10 or 11 pounds. And I know a lot of people say, you know, oh, that's not a lot. But at this level, I think it is a lot. And this is him winning the lock and stakes over a mile, which is a distance I think probably just stretches him here. You can see he's tying up uh, in the closing stages. Good old Sharon is chasing him down for him, which has been franked. Uh, and I just think what this horse really wants to bring out the very, very best in him is a flat track, a good gallop uh, and, um, and fast ground. And I'm hoping he's going to get that. Um, on Saturday, that just really brings out the best. So 13 to 8, I thought was more than fair. Um, you could argue, if you, if you could say it's a bit, of a, a bit of a joke that he's not carrying a Group One penalty here. I know if you're probably if you finish second to him, beating the neck or something, I know I'd be raging as an owner. But take the low-hanging fruit. He's not carrying one, so that's what I'm going to do. So audience for me. And me. And I, and I feel I like I've it. got nothing else to really add to that. Literally, you've ticked every point I wanted to make on Wilds of Audience where kills me to side against Kim Ross. He is my absolute favourite flat horse in training. But we know that Kim Ross though, is chasing the third successive win in this race at the age of seven. But... I agree where I don't think that Kim Ross has quite fallen off of the cliff as some people are making out in terms of his form. But 
audience is just the one who's massively improving and Kim Ross is just that little bit behind. You can see him in the back of vision here from the Goodwood run and for all that I expected the pace collapse this day completely and there wasn't too much apart from a few of those pace angles that missed the break and didn't go forwards. I still thought though with it being well run with our power up there the pace was going to collapse and tee itself up perfectly for Kim Ross. It's interesting you say that. I went back and I had a look at the sections of that race on the At The Races website, which mm -hmm. are there now. And the first two furlongs were really steady and they got a lot of cheap lengths early. I thought the ride on Art Power uh, uh, by David Allen was very good. And I thought the ride by Robert Havill on, on Audience was very good. Now, the rest of them, you can see them, they, they won't give, get that same kind of rope again. But at the same time, I think, you know, this day, Audience did carry a Group 1 penalty and he doesn't tomorrow. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a bit madness, the conditions of the race. But as you say, we do need a seven furlong Group 1 in uh, the country. And if the Lockinger winner goes and win this, maybe this is the one to be. Yeah, then hopefully we will get that average, but we need some of those like 112 horses to be finishing in second and third, then yeah. to be further bolster. Because audience is one, two, four, I think. One, about. two, four, yeah. He's now rated, so hopefully though we will get that then. And uh, and Eck and I both with audience. So Sam, you're going to join the party? No, oh, and I'm going to be a little bit disparaging about poor old audience, I think here. And I, I just wonder those runs this season where he's been, you know, those, those two wins. You know, Goodwood, he was right up with the pace. It was a really good ride from, from Rab Hablin. And, you know, I still think the lock in, I don't know. I, I just don't want to be taking 13 to 8 about him. I'm just not convinced the jockeys are going to let him have such an easy time of it here. Uh, I've got a lot of respect for him, but I just felt that price was a bit too short in this field. Uh, Kinross, for me, definitely think that that comment around, you know, now seven, it'd be some miracle to, to, to make it three in a row in this race. And he's a great horse, isn't he, that he's still in training, but... I do think his powers are probably on the wane a little bit, which brings me to kind of a newcomer to this scene in the three-year-old Lake Forest who goes up in trip. And I think that's really significant. Um, you know, this season been seen the twice and finished second twice. And I think going further is definitely going to help his course. We'll watch back the Newbury run here, which, um, you know, came against elite status that I think I've put up this day, managed to find a winner, which is first time for everything it feels like at the moment. But I really was impressed by this effort, you know, definitely had to do things the hard way by trying to make up ground on the field and when we get to the finish of this race just watch how he goes through to the line um comes through a bit of traffic doesn't get the chance to track the leader but i thought this was a really really good effort and it really put him on my card for these kind of races goes up in trip as i say for a trainer that absolutely loves to have winners at york and this effort just really really caught my eye and i felt like Four to one's probably about as short as I'd want to back him in this kind of contest. I was hoping we might get slightly bigger, but I'm going to take a bit of a flyer here. Something a bit unexposed to try and get the better of audience who I don't quite think warrants that one, two, four rating. Oh, OK, then disparaging comments Bo from Bo Boswell. Boswell's ratings, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Rick sees ratings in the bin. Boswell's rate doesn't quite have the same <laughs> ring to it, is all I'm saying. Lake Forest, though, for Sam at 4 to 1. And Deck and I are both with audience and very strong with audience as well. Back over the seven furlongs. Again, do let us know in the comments section below who you fancy for the City of York stakes. Now we move on to the big one itself. Never an easy task, is it? But this is the evil Heritage Handicap. Four-year-olds and over, over a mile six comes up at 3.35. Now, Queenstown heads the betting for Aidan O'Brien. Now, he's only won at the Ebor once back in 2001 with Mediterranean. So, Sam, you're backing Aidan O'Brien to win it again. Yeah, I am, Kate. And regular viewers of the show will know that I'm a big fan of Queenstown. And um, I think, I can't remember what price we put this up, Antipost, when we did a feature on it a few weeks ago, but... Let's be honest, arrives here with the trainer absolutely banging form as we expect at this time of year. And I, I just really, really like his profile for this. Um, you know, that form behind Kip Bros to me ran ranks him as a real standout potential improver. Only four relatively lightly raced. And I just really felt that I wanted to keep this horse on side. Six to one looks about right, I suppose. I wouldn't want to be taking anything much shorter in a race of this nature because it is really competitive. You do need a bit of luck in running. But to my eye, he is versatile on the ground. This will probably be the quickest ground that the horse has encountered. So uh, Deg, who's put me on weather watch, I'll be hopeful maybe of a shower or two just to take the sting out of it. But I just really couldn't get away from the fact that I felt that this has been clearly the target and just looks like going to absolutely relish this kind of trip and for me it was very hard to see past the favorite unoriginal thinking i know but it's just a really nice 
most tight for this kind of contest. We've got the maximum field size as you expect for this. Uh, Betvix are paying five plays as well. So if you want to take the favourite on, you may want to look each way. But I can't see past Aiden O'Brien. James Doyle in the plate. I'd love to have had Ryan, but James is a very able deputy. Definitely so. And nothing about Aidan O'Brien's form this week is going to put you off of Queenstown whatsoever. But doesn't obviously have that winning strike rate in the race deck. Yeah, it, to be fair, it's another race where you could have, you know, you had a short list of seven or eight yes. and you're trying to break it down. Um, I, I swore to myself after Nakeeb's run at Newbury last time out that I would back him wherever he went next. I thought he was a huge eye catcher. Uh, he'd done so well to get so close to the Enterprise and he ridden temporise and just by magic it appears on the screen. <laughs> uh, the winner this day was given a very good ride and, and I just thought Nakeeb... Um, to be fair to, to, to Jim Crowley and the Shadwell team, I think they, they did try and make the running with him earlier in the season and it lit him up. So I think today, uh, this day was all about getting him to relax and finish out his race. And he did that really well. Um, as you'll see now when they pull clear at the line, the first two are well on top of the, of the rest of the field. And, you know, I just thought the ground that he had to make up on, on decent ground, uh, it was a big, big run. I think a couple of things are in his favour as well. The slight tr drop and trip um, in the e-board is going to suit him. And the little bit of rain I think will suit him as well he has got quite a knee action on his uh, off four and he's quite low to the ground so I, I think the little bit of rain will definitely suit him I don't think he wants rattling quick ground although he did he did run quite well there and we shouldn't forget right little pedigree quiz for you guys oh no here we go can you name uh, this guy's two famous half brothers oh well it's all going to be the Shadwell family there you go and are they all stayers? Are they both stayers? No. Not stayers? One of them is a stayer. One of them is a miler, 10 furlong horse. Baid, I'm Correct, guessing. Correct, Katie one of them. Tracy, yes. 10 and points. 10 well, points. Right, go on. Have you got the next one, Sam? <laughs> no, keep going. Right, it's Hookham. 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 Well, the Hookham. One, then. Hookham. So, Baid and Hookham. There wow. you go. So, as you can see, this guy is well bred for the job, but he's by Nathaniel, given that more influence and stamina. There's the stamina so, part of it. There you go. So I'm hoping uh, everything will click uh, right for this horse tomorrow. Two very talented horses then in that pedigree line. We know you love the pedigree lines there. So I might have to throw it back to you to stop, find out who Relentless Voyager is related to in terms of group form. So I'm going to leave that with you whilst I make the case. Just so I'm, I don't know myself, to be honest. Relentless Voyager for me, though, I just think he's overpriced in this. I can't believe that I'm getting the price that I am about him. A horse that I mentioned earlier on in relation to Phantom Flight, of course. But for the each way play extra places on offer he won a really competitive handicap on derby day at epsom and he's backed that success up with two further solid efforts at this track third in lister company and then at goodwood last time out second in the group three behind alazi in front of phantom flight so hopefully we get some further insight from that lad in the first race now his york run came over this course and distance sole go over a mile six that race came to counted against him he was held up from off of a steady pace just to get the trip meant he was caught flat-footed when the pace lifted and last time he did have the run of the race at Goodwood but it was still a solid trial then for the Ebor and uh, hopefully then to navigate stool 20 which has not been a bad place to be in recent renewals has he got any talented siblings I don't know I was trying to cheat and look at my phone but I didn't get there in time <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was giving you enough time to be fair in that but uh, fair news maybe we'll be able to find that out when we get to the best bets part of the show which is up next so by the power and the magic of television we will appear over at the skypad in just a second and here we are over at the Skypad to give you our best bets of the weekend. And again, our naps are going to be boosted. Well, my next best is going to be boosted, not to give too much away, but there is a reason for that. However, though, Deck, you're up first with your own best bets. Yes, the nap uh, that I put in first to the group this week is going to be <laughs> audience uh, up at York. I, I just think this is a really good opportunity for him. Hopefully York don't get too much more rain. But look, he's basically a group one winner in a group two race without a group one penalty. Knows the, the course and distance very well and has been in the form of his life this season. So he will do for me. And then the next best, do not forget Sky Sports Racing on Saturday. They've got a good card at Windsor there tomorrow. And I think Persica will go close in the Winter Hill. I think it's very interesting 
interesting that Sean Levy is deciding to come here instead of riding should have, should have been a ring at York on Saturday. This is a really progressive son of uh, New Bay. He's been in great order this year and I'm hoping he can turn over my Prospero in what is a very good race. I would like at least 7-2. to two. Now, the long shot. The recent rain around York is going to be good for this lad who is space sport for the Muir and Grassic team. Nearly Ooh, forgot nice. that. A, a, a really likeable front running horse who impressed me at Sandown uh, um, on his last start. A um, little bit of a tear away early but I loved when he got to the front on his own. He pricked his ears and he did it all nicely and he stayed really, really strongly. Um, I think if the ground gets a little bit tacky and he gets loose on the front end, he could take a bit of passing. 14 to 1 as well then and Dexnap is being boosted audience and you can take advantage of that either on the Bet Victor website with the dedicated weekend winners microsite also on the QR code. Now that has been boosted 13 to 8 to 15 to 8 for audience and Dex Napo, as he said, he got into the WhatsApp group <laughs> speedier than I did then, but not to give too much away because Sam, we're going over to you for your own best bets. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm taking on audience so he doesn't feature in my best bets, but we do have three from York to look at. My nap kicking things off is going to be see the fire. I'm really confident Andrew Baldings. Uh, Philly here can give a really good account of herself. I think this kind of company, she should really be up to winning a race of this nature. She goes off clear favourite for me, and I'm fairly sure that we will have a good result in the opener at York. Uh, the next best, I'm going in the e board. as you can see. I'm going to play two, but Queenstown, I'm really, really confident on. I think Aidan O'Brien might not have won this race too often, just a Mediterranean, as you mentioned earlier in the show, Kate, but... I think Queenstown looks absolutely tailor-made for a test like the Ebor. Uh, and drawn in a very similar position to Queenstown High is Yashin, who was seventh in the race last year. Um, has actually had a wind up since last being seen at Newcastle. Jesse Harrington's horse is going to be my long shot. I think you've got to have something on your side each way in the Ebor. And for me, I felt like this horse could potentially just go a couple of places better. Obviously, has that form line with Queenstown. So if I like Queenstown, should really be having a saver on Yashin at a big price. So best of luck with everyone that's having a bet in the Ebor. It's a great race. Looking forward to it. Yeah, as tricky as the e is to find the winner of, it certainly provides us a good opportunity for those long shots and Sam taking full advantage of that. But again, Sam's nap is being boosted. And again, the QR code or the website to take advantage of that. Now, 16 to 5 from 11 to 4 then with that boost for See the Fire for Sam. Now, as mentioned, my own nap is going <laughs> to be audience as well. I am not just jumping on the bandwagon. Deck and I have in total agreement earlier on that he is definitely the seven furlong horse to beat at present. Perhaps Kim Ross's crown has been passed over. So in the Group 2 City of York Stakes, audience then with speed and stamina. That should get him into a perfect position to win yet again. Now I'm going down to Goodwood for my next best bet. Nine to one. I'm pleased to see that price because I wasn't entirely sure which way it was going to go with Royal Dress. But of course she goes in the Group 2 Celebration Mile Stakes taking on some of the boys there. Lead artist is the favourite, could well just go and dot up in this, but he's just a bit too short for me, rather than I can't ignore the price about Royal Dress. Loves this course, winning over course and distance in Listed Phillies Company in May at 33 to 1. But she's proven that that's been no fluke, showing her form away from Goodwood, a variety of ground as well. So it doesn't matter what sort of rain or lack of rain hits Goodwood at the weekend, as she showed at the current last time out with her Group 3 success. Now, the long shot. I keep trying to be. I don't know who holds the record for the biggest price long shot so far. I think it's 50 to 1 the longest that we've gone, Deck. You went 50s 1 or have we gone 66? I think you might have gone 66 as one day. Oh, we're trying to beat it. But 50 to 1 then about Alfred Boucher in the Ebor, a horse that I, I think the world of. Now, he finished second in this race a couple of years ago before he went to Chester. He ended up pulling up so he got hurt in that. He subsequently missed all of 2023. He came back last time out. He finished out the back of the screen so he could just be gone at the game. But if he still has Got any of that ability left and he's running off of a pound lower mark than for the second place finish in the race and a couple of years ago now my nap is obviously already being boosted with deck selection there so my next best bet is being boosted the bet victor traders have been very kind to us and that is royal dress who is now 11 to 1 from the aforementioned or four as you can see on the screen there nine to one so 11 to one then for royal dress but that is everything from us on this week's show 
both a big thanks to Deck and notably then for Sam for dialing in as well on this week's show and all of their hard work. What a show. What a big, show. Big orange and pop master. I love it. <laughs> Pop master. <laughs> oh my goodness, he didn't actually tee that up to be fair, that's caught me <laughs> off guard. <laughs> but a big thanks to Deck for all of the puns, as always. A bigger thank you to you at home for watching. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. We'll be back at the same time next week to preview the pick of the weekend action.